Hey guys, King of Charmanders here, and today I bring to you a video on the best Coral Puke Puke water builds for the Vernal Invader. So this guy provides Coral Puke Puke water attack builds as of the Vernal Invader update. I will analyze the best builds for each weapon type. However, keep in mind, and as unfortunate as it is, Coral Puke Puke does not have a longsword, dual blades, or a charge blade weapon type. If you are one of those three and you want to use it, you're going to have to use another monster type if you want to use those weapons. And one build is the default for a lot of the weapons, so I won't go over them and just go over what you need. So I'm going to refer you back to that one slide. If you are looking for a particular, if, or not looking for a particular, but if it's that build, I'm going to just be like, hey, it's just what it is. Here's what you need. I will also be releasing a video on Gyrotodus as it's easier to go after. Also, I'm going to say this multiple times in this video, Great Jagger sucks, don't build it. Unless it's that one time in the story where it's like, hey, you need to build the Jagger's Edge so that you could advance, do that. Otherwise, don't do it after. But first, let's get started with the water monster types comparisons. So, Coral Puke Puke is the strongest out of all the water monster types so far. However, it is a subspecies, so it's difficult to encounter outside of events. So Koro Puke Puke is kind of stuck in a rock in a hard place, you know, we've only had one event and that is the weekend it got released. Since then it has absolutely been MIA, missing in action, and you haven't seen it for the longest time. So with that being said, it's probably not in your spectrum if you haven't built it yet. As far as built it and got it to a certain level, you're kind of waiting for a little bit. So you move on to the next best thing. If you want more accessibility, you do not want a subspecies that's only going to come here once in a while, or you have no idea what's going to happen, like with me and Black Diablos. You have Gyrotodus, and Gyrotodus comes in as the best monster type that's the most accessible. However, it only spawns in one biome, so it will only spawn in swamps. Despite this, if you aren't going for coral, this is the next best thing. Water isn't really a must-have element, and... There aren't a lot of monsters that are weak to it. So if you can hold off until you want to build your Coral Puke Puke weapon, Gyrotodus again is the next best thing. And as I mentioned before, Jagras is worthless. Don't build it. Don't use it. Don't even look at it. Don't sniff at it unless you have to forge it for the story. That's it. The raw might be high, but there's no reason to invest in it. For example, yeah, you have a really high raw attack there, so you can use it for regular monsters, but you're better off using those resources to build something that's actually better and can cover a wider range of monsters rather than the Great Jagras. Because outside of the armor for the Great Jagras water attack, Great Jagras sucks. Alright, now we have the build starting off with the Sword and Shield. For the Coral Puke Puke Sword and Shield, you have the water attack 5 crit build. And here's an important note. This is the default build for a lot of weapon types, so go back to this slide if you want a deep dive reference. So if you want a deep dive as to why this is good or why it's meta for the water attack builds for the rest of them because it's going to be the same, go back to this slide. This has a practical theoretical damage assessment of 3690 versus water weak monsters. If you don't have the Koro Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, you can use the Kuru Helm in place of the Koro Puke Puke Helm. As what it does is not only is it cheaper, but it also still gives you lock on and some and critical eyes. So you still get critical eye level 1, but you lose out on 2 levels of weakness exploit. In addition, this build will max out Water Attack at level 5. So Water Attack 5 is generally the big consistence as far as meta for a lot of these builds and for just elemental builds in general. You want to get your attack, elemental attack, as high as possible. And if you have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet, you get a 40% ability to crit thanks to Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical Eye 2 if you're attacking weak spots. For this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Sword and Shield at grade 8 or at grade 10 or as high as you possibly can get it, the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8, the Gyrotodus Mail at grade 6, Gyrotodus fan braces at grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at grade 6, and the Great Jagras Greaves at grade 6. For the next weapon type, we have the Greatsword. And for the Coral Puke Puke Greatsword, you have the Water Attack 5 crit build, which is the same as the last one. So go back to the Sword and Shield side if you want a deep dive for this build. For this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Greatsword at grade 8 
or grade 10 are as high as you can possibly get it. The Coral Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8. The Gyrotodus Mill at grade 4. Gyrotodus Fan Braces at grade 6. Pink Rothian Coil at grade 6. And the Great Jagras Greaves at grade 6. On to the next weapon type and we have the Hammer. What you want to boink to death, you have the Coral Puke Puke Hammer with the Water Attack 5 build. Again, same as the Sword and Shield one. So if you want to deep dive, go back to that slide. However, if you want to use this build, use the Coral Puke Puke Hammer at grade 8. However you want it at grade 10 or as high as you possibly can get it. The Coral Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8. Gyrotodus Mail at grade 4. Gyrotodus Van Braces at grade 6. Pink Rothian Coil at grade 6. And the Diablos Greaves at grade 6. However, we aren't done with the hammer yet as we have the Coral Puke Puke Hammer build number 2. The Water Attack 3, Slugger 2. This sacrifices two levels of water attack to give Slugger 2. So if you are looking to boink the monster to death, it can be a longer drawn out battle and you just want to, you want to be able to knock it over and still do a decent amount of damage, you have this build. And this build gives you the ability to stun and boink things to death like I mentioned because if you are able to do enough stun power, you're going to knock over the monster and then you can just smash it to death. Heartbreaker 1 can allow extra stun power if parts are broken. So if you break parts, your monster is stunned for a brief moment, so this will add on to that. And it has the ability to crit thanks to Weakness Exploit 2 at 25%. For this build, you must have the Koro Puke Puke Hammer at grade 8 or at grade 10 or as high as you possibly can get it. The Koro Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8. The Gyrotodus Mail at grade 4. Gyrotodus Fan Braces at grade 6. Pink Rothian Coil at grade 6, and Great Jagras Greaves at grade 6. On to the next weapon type, and we have one of my favorites, as it is the Light Boga, and you're gonna pew pew bang bang your way to victory with the Coral Puke Puke Light Boga. This is the Burst 2, Recoil Down 3, Reload Speed 3 build. So, this is actually a build that doesn't use Water Attack, because apparently Burst does more damage. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, this thing still does a good amount of damage, which gives you a practical theoretical damage assessment of 3,517. This relies a lot on being accurate with your shots, so you need some practice. What makes the Coral Puke Puke Light Bow Gun so good is the four sticky ammo you see right there. Usually, most wet monster types, or even the high end ones, have only two. But with four, if your shots are accurate and you aim at the head, it's really good. This maxes out Reload Speed 3 and Kui Coil Down 3 to do a ridiculous amount of damage. While it doesn't have the water support, it can still do a good amount of damage again, but you must have skill and land your shots with expertise. The 4 Sticky Water Ammo is ridiculous good if you can accurately land your headshots as you, build dig as you, as you deal big damage and can stun. So, the Sticky Water Ammo is the most powerful type in the game, however, you need skill in order to aim it like I mentioned. Get that skill. Bang bang your way through with the sticky water ammo bazooka style and you will deal a ton of damage. For this build, you need the Koro Puke Puke Light Bowgun at grade 8, grade 10 or as high as you can get it. The Koro Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8. Palum Mail at grade 6. Rathian Van Braces at grade 6. Koro Puke Puke Coil at grade 6. And the Azur Rathalos Greaves at grade 6. Next up, we have the second ranged weapon type, which happens to be one of the ones I main, which is the bow. And for the Kuro Puke Puke bow, we have the Focus 5 crit build. This has a practical theoretical damage assessment of 3,909. It maxed out Focus 5 to allow rapid fire shots. So, Focus 5 is the pretty much the meta standard for the most part. You can go to 4, but for here you have 5. As the reason being is you want Focus 5 is because this weapon has rapid level 3 at charge level 2. So it only takes one blink. One blink for you to fire a level 3 shot. The great thing about rapid is that not, it got buffed on the last time the bow was around. So your, weapon, your arrows are faster and they're a lot more accurate. Well, not a lot, but it's a little bit. Something is better than nothing as far as a buff goes. Thanks to Rapid, you can accurately just fire at weak spots, taking full advantage of Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical Eye 2. So in order for Critical Eye 2, well, in order for Weakness Exploit to proc, 
you must attack weak spots. That's where Rapid comes in. You can accurately fire just a salvo of arrows at a monster's weak spot thanks to the Rapid damage type. For this build, you need the Koro Puke Puke Bow at grade 8, preferably grade 10 or as high as you can get it. The Azurathalos Helmet at grade 6. The Rathalos Mail at grade 6. Black Diablos Fan Braces at grade 6. Pink Rothing Coil at grade 6 and the Gyrotodus Greaves at grade 6. Moving forward to the next weapon type, we have the Lance. The poking poking thing for the Koro Puke Puke Lance is the Water Attack 5 crit build. Unfortunately, this is the same one as many others in this video. So if you want a deep dive, go to the Sword and Shield, the Sword and Shield section for this reference. Otherwise, if you want to use this build, you need the Koro Puke Puke Lance at grade 8, preferably at grade 10 or as high as you can get it. The Coral Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8. The Barrett Mail at grade 6. Bambro Vambrace at grade 6. Pink Rotten Coil at grade 6. And the Black Diablos Greaves at grade 6. However, we're not done with the Lance yet. For the Coral Puke Puke Lance, we have the Offensive Guard 5 Crit Build, which is the second build for the Lance. This has a practical theoretical damage assessment of 3830. So, yeah. It has more damage than the Water 5 build, but you have to be good at proccing Offensive Guard. This does not use Water Attack level 5, instead you have, again, Offensive Guard level 5. It maxes out Offensive Guard to its maximum potential and uses Crit for additional damage. Good thing about the Coral Puke Puke Helm, this gives this build Lock On. If you don't have the Coral Puke Puke Helm, you can use the Kuluyaku Helm. For this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Lance at Grade 8, Grade 10 preferably or as high as you can get it. The Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8. Barriot Mail at Grade 6. Bambaro Vambraces at Grade 6. Pink Rotting Coil at Grade 6. And the Black Diablos Greaves at Grade 6. Hopefully this build guide helps you with Coral Puke Puke. Unfortunately, it's only had one event, so it hasn't been out a lot. But I can confidently tell you, it's very likely next season, we're going to get Coral Puke Puke back. That's because if they do the same pattern that they did before with the preseason, I mean, not the preseason, the seasonal monsters where you had Azerathlos, Pink Rothing, and Black Diablos in story, they're probably going to do that for season two. So Coral Puke Puke will return. However, as we know, not all weapon types were represented by Coral Puke Puke, so you're going to have to use Gyrotodus. And I will be doing another video with Gyrotodus build soon, so that's coming shortly. However, take this into really good consideration. With Leviathans coming out in the future, be mindful that the water meta can change next major update. Leviathans are very powerful. If you've played Rise, or actually if you played some of the other games, you have fought Leviathans. And they're really pretty, but they're also really good. So, again, the water meta might change. You never know what's going to come out in the next couple of weeks. So you want to get into practice of trying to predict what's coming up next or keeping in mind what they have shown us is coming next, which is clear because if you look at their roadmap, Leviathans are coming in the summer. With that being said, please do me a huge favor. Like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Good luck on your grinds. Hopefully y'all are doing amazing in the ice event, getting all your double drops, etc. in preparation for the Zenoga event. And I will see y'all on the next video.